I don't hear anything. It doesn't work. We can, we can hear you. I'm just joking. It was a joke. It was a metaverse <laughs> joke. Okay, I, I guess, I, I guess we, we haven't gotten there yet. <clears throat> Jeez, tough crowd out there. I don't know. This it's very tough. Stand up days. Uh, uh, welcome. Hi, everybody. Um, I hope you guys are all having a great day. So, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just sort of super casual. We kind of keep AMAs sort of informal and just talk through, you know, the project and, you know, obviously just generally top level, I think, NFT and Web3 stuff and to talk, you know, to the community and ask questions, hear stuff from them. You know, it doesn't have to be about the project necessarily. Obviously, we love to talk about the project, but if you have other questions too about like our experience, you know, or anything specific, you know, forever, wherever that's worth, feel free to ask that as well. <clears throat> um, you know, uh, Sins and Sombra were kind of started from a pre-existing visual effects studio that I own and operate with a bunch of um, other great employees and then two partners, Jason Mayo and Aaron Baxter. That's called Bonfire VFX, and that's a, you know, we're, I guess, at this point, an award-winning VFX studio that's sort of operating mainly in the cloud. We, we we were in Manhattan for a really long time, but, you know, when COVID hit, clients really stopped coming in, and, you know, for us being more of a sort of boutique shop that had scaling capabilities to get really big based on sort of, you know, our, I guess, remote pipeline infrastructure, we just chose to sort of, like, you know, go in the cloud. And so it's been really interesting and beneficial i think you know for a lot of reasons but obviously not having that like you know foundational grassroots home is a little bit in my uh heart missed but just because like i i also lived in the office because we had like you know two floors or something so it was a little bit of a weird thing you know live at work but anyway um you know everything's been going great since you know covid happened which is a weird thing to say but you know obviously the vfx and the creative industry has seen a big boom and people have been working pretty non-stop or, you know, I'd say, I don't know, a couple of years now. And, you know, with us, we saw the potential for NFTs and Web3 coming down the pipeline pretty heavily. You know, obviously, if you're on Reddit, if you're on Twitter, if you're on a lot of different, you know, platforms, there's obviously fervor and talk. And I think that it only accelerated over the last year. And basically, you know, we saw that happening. My other partner, who's, uh, you know, one of the founders of Sombra, also Demi and Gordon, he and I, you know, talked a lot about NFTs and his art because he was doing a lot of AI based art. And, you know, I was sort of, you know, working with him on motion capture stuff in a different light and all those things sort of converged. And we decided that, you know, web three and NFTs was a place that a lot of people were going to be. And so we wanted to make sure that we had our foothold there and that we were, you know, doing the research and, you know, making those connections and also building something that gave us experience so that we could continue to participate in the future because, Obviously, this has become quite a movement, and, you know, it's something that I don't think is going to stop anytime soon. So with that, you know, Bonfire and myself and Demian, we sort of started Sombra, and it started off more as an NFT marketplace project that had a token involved in it. Uh, our token SMBR uh, was launched on Binance a year ago, uh, and it's, at this point, it's on Polygon, Binance, and on Ethereum. So it's come a long way, and we have a multi-chain bridge that's supported by multi-chain. The NFT marketplace, I think, for us was one of those things where we we really built it to you know, create uh, something that at the time seemed like a really, really prevalent need. And in retrospect, I think it was potentially not. <laughs> that makes sense. Everything all right? Are you turning around like something wrong happened? I don't know. Yeah, this is weird because I'm like, heard someone, at, like a real I, event. I can understand. Yeah, no, uh, some, I heard someone talking, so... Uh... But uh, uh, he's being he's cool. being the principal. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Someone. No, has to no, do it's it cool. Right. Yeah, yeah. No worries. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, Sombra and all this stuff happened, and uh, we built an NFT marketplace, but we built it on Binance. And at the time, it seemed like it was going to be a big idea. Binance hadn't come out with their marketplace yet. You know, Board Ape Yacht Club literally had come out like a few weeks before we launched our project. You know, we were sort of at the forefront before any of this stuff happened, and it was like, all right, well, what do we do? So we built our own and, you know, that uh, was a huge undertaking and I don't think that we really realized how much work that was going to be. And so basically we then, I think, saw also the fact that Binance didn't really want to integrate to OpenSea and all that stuff. So in the end, it didn't really necessarily take off the way we wanted to, but we learned a whole lot about how to code, how to create smart contracts, how to staff these jobs, you know, safely, effectively, and all these other things. And, you know, from that, we also decided to create SINs which is now the creative IP for our project and sort of how we're hoping to engage with people in the future for metaverse stuff. Um, our project is with mo motion capture. You know, we use XNs, 
uh, faceware as well as NSVR to build characters that then translate into our PTE game and into a TV show that we build in Unreal 5. So each month we basically build a television show inside Unreal 5 using the characters that people have minted as NFTs. And then as owners of those NFTs have governance over everything and can kind of vote on a you know, choose your own adventure TV show kind of plot thing. We write those episodes in five days, sort of South Park style, really quickly. Then basically go into production through motion capture and, of course, you know, uh, CG artists, environment artists, Unreal, Unreal Engine, uh, Blueprint artists, whatever it may be. And then we basically crank that show out, you know, and then that also becomes the cinematic storyline for the game. So basically, like, we also code Unreal Engine missions inside this PDE game. They come out each month. People play them. It correlates to the story that's also, you know, the television show. So basically, if you want to watch the TV show standalone, you can do that. If you want to have the television show be part of your cinematic experience in the PDE game and sort of watch it in segments, as you would when you watch any kind of AAA game, it can also be your experience. So it just depends on sort of what your preference is and how you want to engage with the content. There's multiple ways within each medium to sort of have a you know, reward structure built in for a play to earn, watch to earn, vote to earn, a lot of different earning things, because obviously that's the incentivization that people really want. Uh, let's get, let's be real. People want to make money, right? That's why this is popular. That's why we're all kind of here at the end of the day, I think. Not necessarily our motivations, but because, you know, that's really what has driven this, I think, to become the forefront of the next wave of technology and everything. Now, of course, our motivations can be more pure and more, you know, uh, artistic. I also want to create great, you know, content. But, you know, I think that what really has given people the ability to, like, have all of these things be in the forefront of everyone's eyes is obviously that, like, super crazy hype that, you know, millionaires are being born every day now that's not necessarily what we're here for but <clears throat> obviously we appreciate the fact that it does perpetuate what we're doing um these characters that we create you know on may 4th we're minting 377 of them um on our own d app which is sense of shadow.io and that also has its own staking system for our token as well as for the nfts they also then give you governance like i said over all of these things and you know basically we're going to be rolling out all of these different you know kind of pieces and puzzles over the next few months when you buy a PFP, which is what we're, you know, starting off with, our, you know, PFP characters, they then all have digital twins that are built uh, with IK rigs. They're also built with, you know, AR kit blend chips that can be utilized inside Unreal Engine or inside, you know, any kind of facial tracking app. You know, you can vlog with them. You can Unreal Live with them. You can Twitch stream with them. Um, you can really do a lot of different things with them. And so because you also own the IP of these characters, you can really do whatever the hell you want. Um, prefer that you kind of keep it a little bit clean. But uh, so far, our community hasn't decided to do anything bad. But I think that that's sort of part of the decentralized nature of, you know, these things is you can't really control the community. And that's, you know, we're just kind of going to let it be a social experiment at the same time. So, yeah, you know, these PFPs, phase one, we mint on May 4th, 377 Genesis NFTs. And then we have a later public mint for, you know, a larger batch. Um, then subsequently, you can then upgrade those NFTs to a 3D digital twin that's motion capture ready, facial motion capture ready. Aim ready, cross metaverse ready, whatever you want to, you know, do with it. Then from there, we have our PDE game and our VR cinematic television show. Now, for the VR fans here, you know, obviously this is a mouthful, but I'll I'll end it on this. Uh, the one thing that I think is really cool that I'm most excited about amid all of the things I just said was, uh, you know, VR for me, um, and AR are very different, and I think that they have a very specific place to unfold in the future of entertainment and, and NFT, NFTs and all sorts of different things. And I think, for me, VR is really a, a place of entertainment. It's really a place of immersive entertainment where I can kind of go to a new place and be a different person. AR obviously doesn't have that level of capabilities because you're still in the real world, and it's just sort of a connection point. Now, you know, I, I don't necessarily know what's going to be, like, the future of whatever, but I think when it comes to telling stories, VR has a huge place to do that. And so for us, you know, we were inspired a lot by... Uh, a New York City, well, I don't know if it was New York City based, it may have actually been London or UK based, but it was very popular in New York City for a long time, a play called Sleep No More, which was a, you know, experience driven, sort of Macbeth inspired play that took place over four stories of an old hotel in the meatpacking district of Manhattan. And you would basically go there with your friends or you go alone if you were, you know, bold, and you would a really creepy sort of, um, I don't know what I would call it. It's sort of like an opera slash plague mask. It was really weird. Like they had like this shooting nose kind of, but it was very white and porcelain-esque. You basically wear so that you were anonymous and you everybody would wear one except for the actors. 
very 1920s speakeasy vibe. You'd go in there, you know, they were all in actor mode, you know, no one broke character. You got, you know, old fashions, whatever your poison was, if you, if you drank or whatever. And then you basically, you know, got thrown into an elevator with a bunch of people and then thrown out into these, you know, experiences on some random floor and didn't know what the hell was going on. They'd separate you from your friends. They'd like, you know, do a bunch of crazy stuff that was super cool. And so the point being is that like, you would then walk through this whole experience, have to immerse yourself in it, try to understand what's happening. You'd not really be able to uh, do anything other than really watch and, and take it all in. There would be some sort of moments of interactivity, but at the end of the day, it was really more, uh, you know, kind of a fly on the wall, uh, multi-level experience. And it was insane. And I went a bunch of times, like you really couldn't even take it all in because it was like hard to follow. But our TV show, we took inspiration from that. And, you know, because we're building it in real life, we make them in VR as well. So in the Oculus, which we're all using now, I think, you can actually put your Oculus on and then watch our television show. And, you know, based on your spatial parameters, you can walk around our TV show. And you can, like, you know, walk behind the characters as they're acting out the scenes. Or you can be in front of them or you can be on the side of them. You can be above them. Um, there's a bunch of different things. And I think also with that comes engagement. You know, if they're flying a plane, maybe you can also fly a plane, too, next to them. And, like, you know, you're watching the story happen, but you're also playing with them. There's a lot of different ways that this unfolds. And I think, you know, we're just in the tip of that iceberg kind of breaking into sort of that user experience base. And of course we're doing it with NFTs. You know, NFTs are not a art form or a you know um, anything specific other than a medium to transmit data, information, content. Uh, and of course I think really at the end of it, um, you know, building communities and using NFTs is what is allowing these projects to be so successful. And so that level of distribution of reward of, you know, slight, you know, um, investment whether it's you know an investment contract or whether you know it's just a perceived thing from a few people that becomes really important and i think you know the ability to use nft structures smart contracts which have unbelievable capabilities to do and distribute and to you know create logic that's just beyond even probably what we're at yet that stuff is really going to allow i think brands and you know companies that don't even exist yet to just like create insane communities and to create insane projects and you know also the tech this tech we're in now, the tech that's coming out with Unreal, the tech that Unity has been developing with Weta, with you know their purchase of Ziva Dynamics and a lot of other different you know AI-based neural network things like that, all is going to converge into this insane sort of structure of experience-based you know digital I don't know worlds like this, and you know I'm really excited to see where it all goes. So it's sort of my whole thing, and I guess at that point you know I'd love to hear the community to say if there's any questions you know if you guys want to start a combo about something specific you know let's do it cool awesome well i'm curious when uh, when can when uh, uh, the because the the play to earn game when is is it coming out like the first version of that so right now we've got you know MVPs of sort of some of the first person shooter stuff. We're still working on some of the, you know, GTA style stuff because the way the PTE game works is it's basically an open world roamer where you can kind of <laughs> GTA style, PUBG style, third person, and, uh, you know, interact by, you know, driving cars, vehicles, different things like that, you know, going into different buildings, um, interacting with your friends and using voice chat as well. Uh, so that's sort of the MVP structure that's sort of, you know, being built right now. Uh, at the center of this game, there's also an arena. And in that arena, it sort of acts as like a portal, I guess, into these like team deathmatch, Counter-Strike style little, you know, uh, I guess, yeah, team deathmatches. And those are sort of smaller maps that are, you know, kind of fast paced games. And basically you go there, you can play those games. It's a staking mechanism where basically each team has to put up SMBR token, you play, uh, and then winner takes all. And there's a bunch of other stuff that, you know, obviously read up on and we can get into. But the game itself, I'd say, you know, the MVP beta versions when we're getting community in and testing that game on the servers and also through, you know, um, well, just the servers themselves with the gameplay will probably be up in about six months. I'd say within, you know, about nine months, maybe 10, we would have that integration for blockchain and, you know, potentially whatever other payment systems we partnered with at that point. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Uh, Katana has a question, and I think you have a megaphone. Cool. How do I give it to someone? 
Uh, we've got the megaphone stuff here, kind of under. We we can do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I just came in. Can you just do the whole speech once again? I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I did hear that you guys are you guys are using actors as well. So how exactly can actors get involved with you guys? Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Um, that's a good question, and I think you know, we're developing i think that pipeline right now for how those actors are going to be integrated into the into the system you know obviously the the issue is a little bit that like you know there's remote work that is hard to do i think for certain things and like you know the acting world is tough i'm sure and it's kind of getting more interesting with the way ai is developing and creating kind of you know situations where even voice actors are getting kind of put out of work because ai is taking sort of you know the their jobs <laughs> and uh, it's not great but you know i do think that there are roles for actors within the metaverse in a lot of different places and i think that you know um first and foremost the most obvious is digital influencers like you know if you partner up with a tech company or somebody that has access to motion capture technology at that point you can really like kind of become a different you know type of actor and you know become you know a digital influencer of sorts or you know whatever it may be and there's other motion capture solutions like XN solution is one of the best in the world. Like they're the Lamborghini of motion capture when it comes to suit based motion capture. And, you know, they have a lot of different solutions, you know, um, for people that, you know, range in price. So you can definitely go and sort of see what may, may fit your price range and for what, whatever your specific need is. And, you know, XN's is a partner of ours and a sponsor. And so like, you know, I, I love their technology. It's definitely the most efficient and the uh, most accurate right out of the box. Like, or 100%. I'm not even plugging it. I'm just being honest because it's like what drives and allows us to do what we do. And of course, also Facewear uh, and Manus, which is the hands, um, you know, Manus VR, Facewear for the face. Those things are all, you know, really essential for this. But there are other solutions, which, you know, I won't really necessarily get into. But you can find other solutions that aren't necessarily at professional grade, you know, to kind of start that journey if you want to experiment, um, you know, without having to invest too much up front. But at the end of the day, you know, for us, actors are going to be um, important, but I'd say that they're going to have to be lo likely local um, for for them to be able to take part in that. Because the thing that's really hard is that you have to be able to sync that audio to the face movements. So, you know, when we have actors in, they're wearing headgears that then translate their facial movements to the computer and to the actors <laughs> that are you know, their digital doubles. Then the audio obviously is also syncing up to that as well, and it's really hard to like do the audio separate, then have the actors you know be um, on site. It's just like a really complicated thing. So we're gonna definitely have to do some casting for this, and we're gonna be doing hand a bunch of different actors. But you know, it's gonna have to take place uh, in the New York and New Jersey area. You know, for that, um, I guess that answers your question. Yeah. It depends too. Also, though, just to be just to be clear, like each character gets to choose if they want to have an actor represent them or if they want to have uh, AI represent them. So, like a character in the show, you own it. If you want your voice to be the character's voice, like we do, basically take your voice and turn it into a neural network voice, and then allow you to become your character. So, like that's an option for people, but a lot of people obviously don't like that because they're a little bit uncomfortable. They don't want their voice on TV or whatever. And at that point, then we, you know we do we do need to go down that that voice acting role. But either way, the characters still have to be motion captured. We need actors for the motion capture. Uh, but then in certain cases, we will also need actors for you know the voices and things like that. Um, but you know, obviously, when we do the characters that are voiced by the AI, we don't actually need facial motion capture. We do that act. So yeah. Anyway. Uh, that's super cool. I have a question about the cool. like the IP and yeah. uh, like if so the the drop you were talking about in May will that allow characters to be in the TV show or how is that already happening? I, I missed that a little bit. Can you explain? Yeah, the the, the drop in May, which is three hundred and seventy seven NFTs, that's the like drop that correlates to the TV show and grants access to that. So if you want to have a TV show character, you have to own two or more from that that drop on May 4th. And then basically you get a free NFT, a 3D twin upgrade. So whenever you want to upgrade, one, basically like if you own two or more Genesis from the Mint on May 4th, you can choose any of the sins that you purchase, whether it's in Genesis or Public Mint, to become a TV show character. And then also you get that as a free 3D upgrade to play with in the game. So you don't have to buy that at second man very cool 
Okay, thank you. Yeah, and you own the IP, so yeah, you can do whatever you want. Something where you own the characters. So if you want to like put it on shirts, if you want to, uh, you know, vlog like I said with it and monetize it as a character that you know is ready to go, you can do that. I think that the benefit of one of the things that we're offering is that we're helping people that are in our community get set up with motion capture. So like, if you want to buy one of the NFTs and become that character can then become that character you know with the help of us we'll help you set up the right package for mocap solutions and then we'll also sort of help walk you through setting it up obviously it does take a certain type of mind to be able to do it it's not rocket science but it you know if you're not familiar in any way shape or form with you know how to open a pc or if how to uh if you're not familiar with unreal engine in any way shape or form it may be a little bit of a difficult thing uh, it is doable for sure but you know it's uh something just to have you Cool. Very interesting. Oh, I had a question. Um, yeah, can you give some examples of utility of the Sombra uh, uh, token or this SMBR, right? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, right now, when we launch the NFTs, we have SMBR token staking. So you can stake your SMBR token and basically of 10% of all the NFT sales become a buyback to the SMBR token sale that then gets airdropped to all the holders that are staking. Um, then <clears throat> also you can stake your NFTs as well, and that grants you an APY of SMBR token that you can then you know, do whatever you want with. Utility of the token within the game is obviously that you know when you're playing the game, you have to carry that token around to do things, to buy things, to enter the arena, to play you know certain games you know outside the arena to you know uh play a mission and the thing that takes place is that you know since it's an open world outside of these little missions and things where you're a little bit safer kind of players basically can kill you in the open world it's sort of like westworld you know like that but like it's like gta multiplayer like you can get murdered in the open world and then they can take your smbr token and it's a real smbr token so like you have to carry a certain amount with you uh, at all times to do things you don't have to carry any money with you to but then you just can't go places or do anything um so it's up to you like you can leave your wallet at home but you just wow. can't go to the bodega and buy stuff but you have to carry cash with you basically from smr token and then you can get robbed by being murdered um and you know people can it, it travel in packs and guilds and things and take your token but then there's also like house rangers we call them that take sort of um i guess martial law into ha into their hands and they they'll they'll sort of like if you're sort of like messing with people, they'll take you out and then take your money. Um, and then that goes to the house as well as a little portion to them as players. So we basically also have, you know, we have an economic ecosystem through gameplay. We have an economic ecosystem through like actual jobs within gameplay. Um, we have a creator economy as well called the bodega, which is something that I think is also really cool for 3D artists mainly, you know, game artists. If you want to create game content like guns, cars, clothing, uh, you know, hair, Different sort of you know upgrades it could be really anything you even do like houses the sky's the limit right we allow you basically to um upload those into the sins portal and then we'll make sure that they're game ready and then they can go into the game as nfts that are purchasable by the community and then playable by the community obviously we're going to be selective about that and you know it's not going to be every single thing that we do but you know we will allow then people to monetize their 3d assets inside of the game not necessarily having to like have made the game itself so you, know, you can create a gun and then like we'll make sure that it's like trigger and rigged ready for you know the unreal engine make sure that it's attached to bones and all that jazz and you know you can then monetize that portion of your creation you know through the community and also like if your nft that you've created that's in the bodega trending you also get rewarded as like an actual bonus you know you get paid extra for having created something super dope uh, you know, and that's just simply because it's doing well and trending and people are buying it. So there's a, and then again, this is just the beginning too. Like, I think one of the things to remember is that like, this is such an untapped world that like, we're, we're just kind of trying to figure it out, right? Like big social experiment half the time. We don't know what's going to work. People are, you know, um, really sort of paving the way now. Like these, these, these rooms we're in, I think are, are, uh, definitely like moments to look back on probably in a few years and be like, Oh yeah, I remember that there were these people in that room and like I wonder what they're all doing now. And so, you know, I just, I think it's also important to know that like, you know, the point of why these are so interesting is that it's not like we're going to market with a fully fledged AAA game right out of the gate. Right. We're going to market with a 
high level, high fidelity looking game that has you know high level blueprints and you know user experience, but storyline, the lore, all these things are developed over time. We're not necessarily doing all that up front. We're doing it with the community. Uh, it's a process, you know, and it also is something that really takes a little bit of a load off in terms of creating these types of you know huge multi level experiences. So I think for us. Um, you know, the SMBR token is sort of crucial to everything that's in involved in the game. You know, it's really the whole PTE. It's the whole way people interact with each other. It's sort of the driving factor for rewards and incentivization beyond NFTs. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Awesome. The killing of people and then losing all your tokens, it reminds me a bit of uh, Ready Player One. <laughs> I, I, You know, I actually didn't see it oh <laughs> my god you need to see it it's great <laughs> oh, that's <Good>. funny <clears throat> uh, that's so interesting okay so if i understand this correctly like if i designed a cape or something like that a wearable uh like say i bought um or minted on, on may 4th like a character and then i had designed a cape maybe that I wanted them to wear, I could upload that uh, through x -Sans with you guys and then have that as a wearable? Well, so x -Sans is a motion capture like, company. They basically provide motion capture solutions, but like the wearables and like the bodega, which is the creator economy, that's not really related to x -Sans necessarily unless it's a okay. you know, motion capture piece of you know hardware but yeah if you if you created a like a if you created a cape and you wanted to wear it in the game and you want to monetize it you could create that cape in like marvelous designer or whatever the program is that you're using and then you could upload it and then you know we would vet it for you know um i think optimization and we would have standards obviously that you have to follow from there basically you then can you know mint that as an nft right once it's completely optimized and it's approved then once it's minted people can buy it and then it literally will then be you know a mobile object in the game to use in a multitude of ways and if multiple people are buying it and it's trending then you're getting paid extra money not only for the sales but then you're getting like a bonus because it's like one of the top pieces so you can kind of become you know a creator that's not i think the thing for me is like i always see so many people using artstation right and it's like that's really dope right and they make amazing stuff but it's like you could be fucking making money off that not just as like an nft image right because i think that the, the days of nft images are sort of sort of not over but they're really fleeting when it become when it comes to like being the only thing that is needed to create a sustainable project right like pfps alone are really not what people are looking for anymore they're looking utility obviously this thing we've been talking about for you know months and months and months that everybody wants to bash their head against the wall when they hear you know and it's but it's true it's like how do you use your nfts how do you how do you what's the utility nfts are toys right everybody wants to play with their toys some people are going to keep them in the box and then sell them later right that's what toys are but most people want to open them and play with them right so what are we going to be able to do with our nfts i think that the image thing right you know these pfps are really dope and awesome and they paved the way for where we are but if you're just doing a PFP project, I think people are really looking to see more. They want to know what they're going to be able to do with it and then what the next steps are. And for us, I think that's what all of these different levels of utility are allowing. And, you know, the creator economy, I think, is one where people to be able to take those moments where they're like spending all this time and energy creating stuff in you know, their personal time that then gets uploaded to ArtStation simply for likes on LinkedIn. So they can hopefully get a job and now they can monetize it not just as an image or a render that they put out there for somebody to like you know i don't know look at but they can actually use these things right like if you buy if you if you make like a really cool character and it can go into the game and it can become a character nft in a game or if you buy if you make like a set of clothing it's then a piece of clothing inside the you know the universe and i mean this is obviously where other people are headed as well but for us this is specific for the game you know so it doesn't have to kind of fit into the lore, you know, and fit into the storyline. You know, things have to kind of be catered to that, you know, on brand. You know, it's not just like a random marketplace for anybody to put anything. So uh, there are sort of things to take into consideration. But, yeah, that's the idea. Very cool. Uh, so you're basically like helping artists or creators like bridge fr from the creation to the monetization well, or possible monetization of, of their 
Um, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the NFT marketplaces are doing that, you know, just that we're doing it in a different way. We're basically creating an NFT marketplace for a PT game. Um, but we're also offering services, I think, which is a different thing. And it's not like going to be a massive amount of people. You know, we're going to kind of try to keep it exclusive so that the artists that are on there are, you know, well vetted and known that we can actually like make sure that they're not just like buying something off of CG Trader and then, you know, re re skinning it and then putting it up there. <laughs> I think that like, you know, we will, you know, we, we obviously have a lot of artists we already know and that are interested in these types of things. So I think that we want to help build our brand first and foremost and our community and how we want to get artists excited about making money from their stuff participating in the story and we want our community to also sort of like get to know these artists and support them we want it to be like very cyclical and we, i think that that's the thing about a lot of these projects is like obviously you've seen a lot of scams and a lot of things that you know resonate with ponzi schemes and stuff like that and not all nft projects for by any means are, are that or crypto projects um i think that it just depends on the user or the creator but it can also sometimes unfortunately like be accidental you know people create these economic situations within their like tokens they're really not sustainable or like you know really problematic and it sort of inevitably leads to like the last person holding the bag gets kind of screwed and that sort of inadvertently becomes sort of an accidental ponzi scheme so another thing is such like axie infinity you know where like they're like grant tons of rewards and it's not sustainable economically and like you know they end up like burning through all this cash and, you know, they have to figure stuff out and you know, yeah, 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 yeah. That's just like one little example, but um, those types of things where like, you know, projects end up failing and, and quote unquote rugging, I think are also sort of the same thing at the end of the day. And it can be, um, yeah, I don't know. It can be a little bit tricky. So. Yeah. Very cool. I actually think this is a, a really uh, awesome example of a circular <clears throat> economy. So, like, thank you for taking so. time to explain. Yeah, as long no, as people are is. excited about it <laughs> and want to do it, you know, that's the hardest marketing. Marketing sucks. Marketing changes too. Like, the marketing of NFTs and mar NFT projects is like, I don't know, probably like, it makes me want to put an ice pick through my freaking head like every day. I can't deal with, I mean, NFT Twitter influencers. It's just like they're literally, like, they're not human beings. <laughs> they're just like, I don't know what they are. They're insanely you know, overwhelming with how many of them there are. It's like I get literally 35, 45, 50 messages a day from people on Twitter that are like, hey, I'm the admin of X person with 350,000 followers. Like, we'd love to do promo for you. I'm just like, I can't keep track of this anymore. I mean, just in, that's just like one example, but marketing for NFTs and crypto and everything is changing so fast. You know, what worked a year ago doesn't work now. And like things that work now didn't exist then and it changes month to month and it's so hard to follow certain influencers work and then they don't you know if you have if you time it poorly you blow an entire you know marketing bag you can use on something else it's just so tricky um and i think that that's the other thing too is that people really underestimate how hard it is to get the word out especially these days it's getting even harder you know people are in a saturated market people are over the traditional pfp projects like you can't, you can't just do it and then have it be popular it won't work um, so you really have to be bringing something extra to the table. And I think that uh, people are finding that resistance point unless they're creating something really interesting. I mean, even us, we're finding that resistance point, you know, it's, it's very palpable. Um, we obviously have a lot of specific things that I think are helping us push forward and, you know, making it a great experience, but I can't tell you how many artists and people I, I talk to that are like, you know, we don't have anybody in our discord and we can't get anybody in our discord. I'm like, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to get interested people these days because they want not only to be part of something that's really fun, but they also want to be part of something that they think they're going to make money on. And if you're not providing them with an NFT that's going to be able to have a sustainable floor on top of what you're creating that's artistically cool, then they're like, meh, I don't want to do it. And so it's it's like a, it's just a crazy puzzle, man. It's like playing Tetris every day. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I I have one more question, and then I hope other people have questions too. But where can we watch the show? So you'll be able to watch the show on our D app. Uh, we also have a partnership with people. Where I think we're talking sort of with them as well about you know some possibilities of hosting some things like that. It's going to be hosted through unlockable content. You know, you have to own an NFT to be able to watch it, and you know, obviously, we don't share it. Uh, <laughs> but you know, obviously, for the VR experience, that's a little bit more easily I think controllable because you have to have an oculus and then you have to have your nft and then it has to be on your head so um that'll probably be all fine so yeah i mean i think 
the D app that we create, and then potentially some partners will host some things as well. So, uh, and then who knows, maybe Netflix. Well, yeah, I was going to say, I mean, that would be a cool way to get people interested is if they see the show and then <clears throat> know what's going on. Like the Bela Kunis uh, NFT show that they're Sorry, doing. Man. I think you can. Yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, th these are going to happen. You know, I think we're just like the beginning, right? You know, people are making these things, you know, and they're going to think, I think Netflix and Amazon and everybody, they're going to use NFT technology to sell their services. You know, I think that you're going to see every car company that's running digital service panels start using NFT infrastructure for subscriptions. You know, you're going to see all of these things happen you know, for media that's coming into your car. Like, you know, that's going to be another thing, like media that's coming into your house. Like, it's all going to be NFT based, based on your Web3 account, you know, and it'll happen. Just wonder how fast. Cool. Thank you. Oh, no worries. Awesome. Are there any more questions from the audience? If you have a question, you can raise your hand. No questions for Brandon. <laughs> I like your moves. <laughs> nice. <laughs> So weird, though. I gotta be honest. Like, <laughs> you're not using the motion capture like, now, right? Sickness at all, or do you get used to that over time? Uh, there's some motion sickness to this, <clears throat> especially if you're going like up and down stairs or other, <laughs> like <laughs> traveling. Yeah. It's weird when you're not like fully in control. Like when I'm fully in control of the character, I don't feel ill. But like when I move him around and I'm moving. Like in circles, I'm like, oh my god, like I'm gonna die. <laughs> I kind of got <laughs> used to it, but uh, yeah, I don't know. You're like a fighter jet <laughs> pilot now. You could just like get in the cockpit I guess, and fly that jet. Because You're of like, all these meetups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I can every handle time, it. Every time you move backwards, it's just like tunnel vision, and you're like, all right, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I, I see like a lot of people maybe, joining, but we're like at the end of the presentation. <laughs> can you turn what off? Can you turn off the like? The, like yeah, you can turn off your blinders. Oh yeah, you can. Oh man, that would be great. Where is that? It, if you go into your like the green triangle brings up your panel, yeah. <clears throat> and then you go into settings, and then display. Nice. A lot of people, did we communicate the time wrong or something like that? I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. But cool. Wait, wait, cool to have all these people wait. joining us. <laughs> these just people who saw the event, you know, like after after a while, the event gets uh, populated in a uh, in uh, Oh, space. in old space. Yeah, yeah that's it. More, cool. Welcome, everyone. The more people that are <laughs> nice in, the more popular it becomes. So where yeah. is this? Uh, where is this thing? <laughs> where is this thing? Oh, your blinders? Or uh, let's see. Uh, Display panel. Uh, oh, sorry. It's under comfort. Yeah, there it is. Oh, great, sweet. Oh. Maybe now I won't feel bad. No. Light or off? Oh. Yeah, because it's just... It can, it, like, I don't know. When I like can't see on the sides, it like drives me nuts. But anyway, yes. Ah. Welcome oh. to the Sins of Shadow. Sins. Sombra. MA. Uh, if you're first joining us, you've come at the end, so I apologize, but welcome, nonetheless. Yeah, and this is Brandon. Are you the uh, founder? <clears throat> Correct? So, yeah, my name's Brandon. I'm the founder of Sombra Network, as well as uh, SENS, the NFT ecosystem that we're putting together through Sombra Network. Uh, I also founded Bonfire VFX with uh, my wife, and you know we also have two great partners now, Aaron Baxter and Jason Mayo. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, if you are curious about things, you know, you can check out Bonfire VFX at bonfire.nyc. That's our VFX studio. Uh, Sombra.app is Sombra Network's uh, official, you know, metaverse hub. And from there, you can branch out and see our NFT marketplace our team. You can see the, you know, Sins project, which is sinsofshadow.io, as well as the token and all of the information about that and everything that we're working on. So, yeah. Thanks. 
I saw that um, on your website that your mean state is in about seven days. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. Can you tell us more about correct. that? Yeah. yeah. So on seven days, uh, on May 4th, we're minting 377 Genesis NFTs that also are available to become TV show characters in the project. So if you want to mint an NFT, it's a 0.11 Ethereum, and you can go to our D app, which is sinsofshadow.io, and mint there. We'll also have some NFTs available at Rarible if you're interested in doing that. Uh, and then later on in the summer, we're going to have a larger public mint that's going to sort of correlate to the game and a lot of other different things as well. Super awesome. Um, anybody here fans of minting uh, NFTs or, or anybody has done yeah, it? It would NF be interesting. Minting? You can raise your hand. If Who owns an NFT here? Who, who, uh, <laughs> just curious. You can raise your hand. No one else. <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Also, there. Oh, you raise your hand with the emoji. I see. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you can go. Yeah. 